Hi everybody. Welcome to my house. I spent th this morning filming my workspace. I have a potential opportunity coming and uh, who knows. Right now, however, lips are sealed. Absolutely nothing to say, but maybe someday I'll have some exciting news to share with you all. But I thought since the place is looking so good, I'd walk around with the camera and show you all where I work. My, both my kids have left home, so that's opened up space for me, and I'm taking over every corner I can get. I think at this point, I probably have part of my business in every room of the house, except probably the bathroom. But that's where I wash quilts when I do occasionally wash quilts for people, so even that gets to be a business space. Um, but I will show you all the nooks and crannies, and uh, maybe, you'll, maybe you'll enjoy it. Let's go on a tour. So we're starting here in the living room. It's our brand new sofa. We love it. It's so good and comfortable. But over here, it's not a living room anymore. Over here, it's a recording studio. So this is where I sit when I do lectures or online classes. I'm very, very fond of my diffuser. I hang my diffuser cloth now on two music stands, as you can see. I love the way it looks and it makes me chuckle. So that's always good. Um, I brought my next couple of repairs over to the table for the recording this morning. I'm in the fabric choice stage with these two beauties. Um, here's the laptop sitting on top of the Firefly game. Don't know how many of you are Firefly fans, but we are a family full of Firefly fans, which is a fun thing to say. Here's my notes from the lecture and my basic sewing supplies. Part of the reason this whole house scenario works is that my husband, who works at home also, is a computer guy and he sits in here, there he is, at his computers most of the time and doesn't really care what else I do with the rest of the house. So it works perfectly for us. Um, back over here you may have wondered who this is. This is Sally. She's a marionette we had when the kids were young. And she's still here, obviously, as part of the family. And uh, this is a wonderful oil portrait that was done of the kids when they were six and two. Up on the top shelf here, I have my wools. These bags are made from an old flannel sheet and um, they're tied up tight and inside and around them is lavender sachets as a moth deterrent. Here's some larger pieces of fabric that could be borders and backs. Down below here are all the fabrics that are not quilting weight cottons. There's upholstery fabrics. This bin has a little bit of everything. Shiny things, lacy things, knits, all sorts of things. This is velvets, some of them old ones. This is shears and sparkly shears. Here's a little basket on top of ties and down below my other silks. Here's a basket with some old tops and a little bit of old quilt pieces, things that I can use when teaching and demonstrating. Down here there's a whole basket of um, feed sack, sorry, feed sack fabrics. Um, a whole box of them came in at my quilt guild and the nice ladies who take in donations um, saved them for me because they knew I would want them and boy were they right. Um, here's some etc stuff for other kinds of fiber crafts. Those are my ironing board legs that are getting in the way. Up on top of the ironing board here are fabrics laid out for my next art quilt project. And down here are the drawings that are now enlarged and I'm going to be transferring them on to the quilt. It's going to be a two-sided quilt. And then there's my lovely friendly iron. Down here and the rest of the way around the room I have bins of fabric sorted by era. We have 19th century fabrics, both old and reproduction. Here, however, is a 
big, big basket. Boy, what a splurge when I bought this. It is a basket full of vintage. And uh, had to break quite a few piggy banks for it, but I'm so happy I did it. It's a beautiful, beautiful collection. Uh, came from, it has pedigree from other quilt restorers and uh, history, quilt history people before me. And then these are solid colors, <laughs> green and blue. These are all vintagey, whites, off whites, pinks, reds, underneath it, green, uh, like purple and greens. No, the greens are here. I can't even remember what's in that one below it. That tells you, doesn't it? And here we have uh, just some multicolored things. That's a category, I don't know. And this is just some interesting stuff, uh, some international fabrics, I guess you could say. This is a Japanese one, stuff like that. Up here we have the 1970s. And then along in here, we have 30s and 40s way back there. Those they also get sorted by color. Uh, and oh, over there on the floor, we get into the 50s and 60s. They're not necessarily laid out in chronological order, but there you are. The dresser here under the table has collections of fabric that will hope to become art quilts one day, as also is what's on this table here some with the diagrams and things that will hopefully one day bring these things to life, I could say. On top of the dresser drawer slid in there, there's rulers and tracing paper and um, cutting pad, cutting mat, things like that. Oh, I should mention that I just splurged on my very first wool ironing board cover ironing, no, wool mat with a cotton ironing board cover. And uh, I haven't even tried ironing on it yet, but I hear so many people raving about the cotton, the wool mats I have invested. I have a um, quilt poster, the thread rack. That's a really nice kind. I really like the design of it. Um, there's two of them. One's mounted above the other. Um, that's a, actually a wood puzzle of a pine tree block. Um, this is a very important piece. Oh, it's kind of gotten wrinkly. I need to go straighten it out. It's my mom's cruel work. I'm going to go straighten that out and show it to you again when you can see it better. Um, and here's my design wall. I put up some recently completed pieces again to show. This is a over here an Egyptian applique. Um, this is a quilt awaiting a name. It's wool and beads. This is called Totality <laughs> and it's a, a memory of going to see the eclipse that came here a few years ago. And this one is also still waiting a name. I'm not quite sure what it's going to be. Um, and I have all sorts of little doodles and things on the walls. So here's this little kitty. It's a pillow cover. Uh, it's cruel embroidery that my mom did for me. She loved to do cruel work. And um, I love cats. So this was a wonderful gift she made for me. Um, these hands are because I sign my art quilts with an applique handprint and then embroider the name of the quilt and my signature and the date on it. Um, there's more than my hand here because when my kids were born, I made them each a little commemorative quilt and uh, with my hand, my husband's hand and their little baby hands on it. Well, I was over here back in this corner. I checked in this basket, the one I couldn't remember what colors were in it. It's the yellows. This box down here, which also didn't show from the other side of the room, uh, is dots and checks and plaids and stripes. They come in handy for quilt repair quite a lot. This is my box, my bin of I'll get to it someday projects. This is a 
quilt top that I won at a raffle. So exciting because I really love the pattern. Um, and I'm just gradually, when I think of it and want something to do, um, I will quilt a little bit more on it. Uh, it's a wonderful pattern. I can't remember the name right now. I'll, I'll put it in the comments underneath the video when I go look it up again. Colonial something. Colonial Garden? I don't, I don't know. Um, but it's in Brackman. Um, this is a really beautiful multicolored cross stitch tablecloth with these crocheted insets. It's really beautiful. It has a few holes that need to be mended. Look at there, the edge of it. So cool. And underneath, there's several other I'll get to it someday pieces. My daughter would love this, and I keep thinking I want to fix it up for her. She's got a weight coming, right? <laughs> Poor girl. So there's the fabric collection. What you see is the result of years and years, decades, of being in business of quilts and fabric. And anytime people are clearing out their own sewing rooms, they think of me. And when neighbors and friends of theirs have old things and they don't know what to do with them, they think of me. And I can't ever say no, of course, to really cool fabric and old fabric. So here we are, and it's a, it's a mountain. It's absolutely a mountain, but it's so much fun. So here we go, working around to the final wall of this room, around the corner from the fabric shelves. I have my big box full of different kinds of batting, and I also keep uh, flannel things um, also up above here some flannels and denim and stuff because I like using flat things for filling my quilts sometimes when I don't want the, so, so much rippling going on. Um, here there's, where's my finger? There it is. Here's a um, box with, uh, or it's actually a waste basket with um, quilt rods in it for my art quilts. Um, my art quilts and the antique quilts that I have I'm not really a collector. I have probably 12 or so. Um, they're upstairs in my son's former bedroom. A shelf well, next to those here and here. The, those are my button boxes and baskets. I love buttons and again, collect buttons. Some of them show up in my artwork sometimes. These little plastic drawers are full of embroidery threads and uh, trims and things like that with boxes of laces up above. Um, in this little dark corner here, see if I can get it to light up a little bit. Yep, there's some more things of threads and fabrics. Um, and up above, there's these uh, quilt filler kind of fabrics, candle wick threads in the blue basket there. This lovely wooden box is my mama's sewing box with some of her old sewing tools in it. It's how I learned how to sew. Over here we have the slides department when slides were actually cardboard and film. I've gradually been getting them all digitized as I teach. Over here these little drawers are our notions. There's um, uh, interfacings and this very full drawer has all sorts of tiny little tools. Here's more lavender for refilling my lavender sachets. On and on, stuff like that. Oops. There's my kids. There's my kids when they were younger. <laughs> There's my cat from years ago. Uncle Otto he became known in his older years. Um, and this is a lovely painting that my uncle did. He had quite the sense of humor. He took up painting kind of like Grandma Moses in his later years. Had a lot of fun with it, a lot of fun with it. And that's a clock I made with, you know, spectrum because I'm a quilter. And then I have my books. More than will sit on my bookshelves right now, so something needs to be done about that. I didn't help the situation along this pile most of it is what I bought during the first couple years of the pandemic. Didn't realize I was relying on book purchases so much to get me through, but it did, so I'm not complaining. I also collect rocks, beautiful rocks and stones. That's what's in there. 
more books. I change what's on my table in the dining room every season, so those are the three seasons that we're not in. <laughs> oh boy, a lot of stuff. And my friendly Bernina. And sewing machine tools. Uh, this wonderful lamp that I now use for filming, doing live demos and stuff when I teach. It's the best one ever. No affiliation, but it's great. It's from a company called Canvas. It's wonderful. So that's the end of the tour. That's the majority of my stuff. As I said, I have other things stashed here and there in other corners around the house. I have a pile of boxes of my books and the shipping envelopes in one spot. I have my bead collection in another spot. Um, and it just it's just everywhere. But it's so fun to have a store here. I hardly ever have to go out. I can have an idea and root around long enough. I'll find probably what I need or something close to it. And it's really nice to be able to be using it up too. <laughs> Although it doesn't look like I am. There's just a lot of stuff. It's all organized. I kind of know where things are. That's something. It's just a lot. So I hope you enjoyed seeing it. Thanks for coming.